Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this evening. This is the uh, USDA SPRS grant program presentation. Uh, my name is Daniel Costa. I work for the Rhode Island DEM Division of Coastal Resources. With me today is Bob Ballou from the Director's Office, Julia Livermore and Nicole Costa from the Rhode Island DEM Division of Marine Fisheries. This meeting is both being held uh, in person and virtually. We have a, a couple of next slide. Um, just housekeeping announcements here um, for meeting participation. So all virtual participants will be muted throughout the entire meeting uh, to make a comment or to ask a question virtually. Uh, please use the raise your hand feature in the Zoom webinar. Um, the meeting, I, I will be uh, unmuting people one participant at a time to make sure the comments they can ask their questions. And uh, the participant will then be remuted after you're done with making comments. Uh, comments and questions in the chat will not be recognized. You must use your raise your hand feature to be recognized uh, by me so we can uh, get clear comments throughout the evening. Next slide, please. So the purpose of this meeting, we're all here tonight to discuss the USDA SPRS program. This is a block grant program put out by the USDA Department of Agriculture's uh, Agricultural Marketing Service Division. SPRS stands for Seafood Process Pandemic Response and Safety Block Grant Program. It's a very unique program that just uh, came into our laps relatively recently. Um, this funding from this comes essentially from the Consolidated Appropriation Act or the CARES Act. And the purpose of it is to assist state agencies in defraying the expense of preparing for and preventing exposure to COVID-19 and responding to COVID-19 specifically for seafood processing facilities and seafood processing vessels and dealers. So eligible grant applicants. Um, this grant is going to be eligible to entities including state agencies, commissions, departments, and all eligible states that are responding for agricultural, fisheries, wildlife, seafood, and commercial processing or related commerce activities within that state. Um, the Agricultural Marketing Service will make only one award per state territory, and within that, the state agency must coordinate. So that's, that internal coordination is being done by the Rhode Island DEM. We have spoken to our um, Department of um, Health and also uh, the <clears throat> Rhode Island DEM's Division of Agriculture, and the team consisting of the Division of Coastal Resources, Agriculture, and Marine Fisheries, along with the Director's Office and Legal Counsel, will be comprising this uh, grant application and the team administering it. So a little bit of background. Um, as I had mentioned, the grant opportunities is relatively new to us. It just came into our laps late September, exactly September 23rd, 2021, when we were made aware of the grant opportunity. There was uh, two uh, inf informative sessions held online by the USDA, which many of us participated in, just to get some background information. So essentially, seed agencies shall provide funds for seafood processors and processing vessels and dealers. I'm going to get into a little bit of the definition of those as we go down the line. And the, <clears throat> the USDA has also asked us to conduct outreach to ensure that their eligible beneficiaries are aware of this relief and understand the requirements of the funding opportunity. This is exactly what we're doing here this evening. The purpose of this meeting here tonight is to inform all of you about this opportunity to uh, discuss and uh, what to say solicit information from you all about how we can best administer this grant. Um, each processing facility or vessel can apply separately for funding. So once the state of Rhode Island applies for the grant, we would be administering it from here. And then processors may only apply once for each location or vessel. So you can't submit multiple applications per business. State agencies should determine funding amounts based upon their local conditions and industry needs. Myself and Bob Lou will be discussing that point a little bit later on down the line as we go through the uh, criteria for application. So grant amount by state. So uh, state grant allocations were determined using NOAA landings data. Um, there was a minimum amount of 200,000. The entire grant for the uh, country was five, uh, $50 million for this uh, particular program. The state allocations are now shown here, and I had uh, taken the liberty of highlighting in red Rhode Island's allocation, which is exactly $371,412. 
again, this allocation was determined by the USDA and kind of handed down to the states based upon our landings. <clears throat> so the eligibility period. So the state shall issue direct payments to seafood processing facilities and vessels for costs incurred between January 27th and December 31st, 2021. Uh, as you may know, the um, eligibility period is still open. So the impacts that you have received as a business should have incurred during this particular period here. Uh, the reason for the January 27th date was that's when the uh, federal government had declared the uh, emergency for the pandemic. So who is eligible for this particular program? Um, the USDA was very, very specific about this. This is not something that we can necessarily deliberate. This was uh, handed down to us as far as the uh, grant um, application uh, information. So dealers, processors, and at sea processors. These are defined here in this slide. Um, a processor, and this is very specific, bless you, means the owner, operator, dealer, or agent responsible for any activity that changes the physical condition of a fisheries resource suitable for human consumption. So it does not include bait. Um, retail sale, industrial uses, or long-term storage. So essentially anything that's cooked, canned, smoked, salt, dried, shucked, filleted, or frozen, or rendered into meal or oil. Um, it's important to note here at this point, any owner operated dealer or agency exclusively gutting, gilling, heading, or icing of seafood without performing any of the above activities is not considered a processor. So this is a little bit of a specific definition here. Uh, this grant program also includes at sea processors, which are further defined as uh, defined as a processor, but on a vessel that has the means to float and to move from one location to another, either in federal or state waters. And a dealer, and that essentially means anyone that is first licensed and uh, receives fish in the way of purchase and then sells that to restaurants, markets, or other dealers or processors, essentially taking product and then reselling it. Qualifying activities. And again, these activities were defined by the USDA. These are very specific. There are six of them. Uh, workplace safety measures, uh, market pivots, retrofitting facilities, transportation, worker housing, and medical. And our hopes this evening is to discuss specifically some of these qualifying activities and how we may tailor make this grant application be more beneficial to our constituency here, you all the seafood process and dealers of Rhode Island. Uh, there are some details about each and every one of these qualifying activities, uh, such as, you know, work safe place D measures, he includes filters, thermometers, cleaning and supplies, so on and so forth, and, you know, retrofitting facilities, you know, is very specific to uh, plexiglass, walk-up windows, um, things like that. We can discuss in detail uh, a little bit more about these later on in the presentation during the discussion session. Um, it's strongly advised by the USDA that we include accountability and verification of claims in our application process. So, and this is something that we would like to solicit information and opinions from you all. Again, the Rhode Island DEM must really develop an accountability process for claims verification. So we're not really sure exactly what that might look like. So we really would like to solicit input from you all the stakeholders and define some appropriate requirements, something realistic that we can verify claims with. I was also strongly recommended that this aspect um, of the grant application, you know, include an audit process for future verification to, let's just say, stymie or discourage any uh, fraudulent claims. So grant partners, um, we, the Rhode Island DEM, uh, will be administering their grant. We're going to be uh, forced to take a minimal uh, administrative fee for the grant administration of this uh, particular grant. Uh, it's going to be similar to the CARES Act. I'm told um, I can't at this time tell you what percentage or what amount that might be, but I can tell you it's probably somewhere in the realm of twenty to $30,000. We've learned a lot through two rounds of the CARES Act 
and we've gotten a little bit efficient at this by now. So uh, we're happy to say that we can take a minimal fee uh, for administration of this process. Of this process. And uh, just this morning, we uh, had gotten word that the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission will be gracious enough to administer checks on behalf of this process. So we're going to partner with them in this grant application. Uh, it's um, a very efficient way of doing things to have the commission issue checks in this process. Uh, we've kind of learned from our uh, previous experience that you know this is the easiest way to go. So we're going to take advantage of that. And we're very fortunate to have the commission as a partner on this. There will be a uh, small administrative fee as well taken by the commission for the check administration in the final uh, disbursement phase. Next slide. So some preliminary timelines. Um, you know, please don't hold any of us to these timelines. We're, we haven't applied even to this grant yet as a state. Uh, we intend on doing so by the application deadline, which is coming up very soon on November 22nd, 2021. This has been a, a really quick turnaround. We were first noticed on the September 23rd, and the application is due into the grants.gov system by <clears throat> the 22nd of November. It's a pretty quick turnaround of two months. So they estimate that grant awards will be noticed out by January 2022, just at the uh, turn of the year. And we'll get started ahead of time, but we assume the regulatory process that we'll have to enact in order to support this program will be in process and in place somewhere in the realm of March 2022. Application period could then open sometime in the mid-April with an evaluation appeal, taxation review, in the following month in November, I'm sorry, May of 2022, and then with final fund distribution by the commission in June. It's a six month turnaround time from grant award to uh, final check writing. It's a very aggressive timeline. Please don't hold us to it. It's just something that we're estimating at this point in time. Um, so I'd like to open the floor now to questions and discussions. It's very important to us in this group to really solicit information to best tailor make this grant application to better serve you all, the seafood processing community. So um, if you have any questions in the room, I would start with first, and then we'll go to the online participants as well. And again, I might remind you to please use your raise your hand feature if you would like to speak um, and ask any questions or make any comments here this evening. So um, before we do that, Bob, could I ask you if you could join me a little bit in further discussing the six qualifying criteria and how we might approach an application and the binning of the funds within those six or, or maybe not those six? Sure. Um, Thanks. I um, it's Bob Ballou with the director's yeah. office, and I've been working with yeah. Dan to both try to understand this program and then be able to present it tonight. And it's our understanding that we have some yep. sideboards that we need to maintain, and that is to ensure that the grant application that we submit and the program that we implement um, addresses the key issues that Dan covered in his PowerPoint. That would be to reimburse for costs incurred over about a two-year period ending this December um, for COVID-related uh, mitigation activities in six distinct categories that are on the screen on the board right now. So within that framework, we have flexibility. And of course, we also have a fixed amount available to us. I think it's $371,000. So we, within that framework, we have flexibility in the way we can develop the grant application such that we could open uh, grant opportunities to address all of these categories or some subset of these categories and we could potentially allocate our grant in such a way that we dedicate a certain amount of funding to certain of these categories in some formulaic fashion we don't know what that would be and we're here tonight to get input on that but uh, it is something that usda has emphasized and that is the flexibility of states to develop their program in a way that best meets the needs and interests of the constituencies in each state. And that, of course, is here in Rhode Island. 
So we really are looking for feedback tonight on which of these categories is uh, of most interest, of most relevance in Rhode Island, and that might, and whether you feel that there should be sub allocations made uh, in accordance with these categories or not. So it's a really an open ended situation that we will need to work through, and we welcome feedback on, on that issue. Thank you. Did you want uh, have any questions or want to open the discussion or have any opinion on? I'm well, just trying to get, you know, just trying to understand the parameters. So, you know, market, we're talking about market pivots and a retrofit facility. So, if we have a retrofit facility to take care of more, you know, walk into the facility, to make sure it was safe for COVID, you actually had areas to find for whether they're client or customers or for the workers. So it seems like those two things would fit squarely within the market pivots and retrofitting facilities type categories. Um, Patrick, did you have any questions or opinions we could help you out with? Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Let's make sure I understand. So there's one grant from the state of Rhode Island for the $300,000. 371. And that yes. grant could be multiple applications and multiple awards within that grant that would roll up and fund that. So this grant would be available to any seafood processor, processing vessel, or dealer within the state of Rhode Island. So Rhode Island will, Rhode Island DEM will apply for the grant, will be hopefully awarded the grant, and then take on applications from our licensed seafood processors and dealers for these specific categories or some variation thereof what is here. And again, we want to try our best to tailor make the application to benefit you all. Uh, and this is the opportunity to solicit input you know, from you all about you know, how we might make our application better. So I take it that you know, market pivots and retrofitting facilities are important to you based upon you know, what you had yeah, just said. Yeah. Um, I don't see anyone's hand raised on the Zoom meeting. Uh, does anyone have any questions in the Zoom meeting that I could help them with? Okay, seeing none. Um, Bob, did you want to bring up any further comments to move the discussion further that we might solicit any any opinions here to help us out? I guess I'll pick up on one of your slides which indicated that we're going to be called upon to uh, provide some sort of verification. Uh, uh, and I'm wondering, as you as being in the business, what your thoughts are on that. I mean, on the one hand, we're not looking yep. forward to entertaining shoeboxes of receipts and, and that sort of thing. On the other hand, we have to have some, um, you know, it has to be administered responsibly in a way that ensures that valid costs are being reimbursed. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on you know, how that aspect of the program should work. What should the applicant be called upon to provide? It could be something as simple <coughs> as an affidavit, an attestation that these are all legitimate uh, costs that have been incurred and the documentation is available and would be provided upon request be it an audit that were to occur. So that would mean you're, you're attesting that you have that information, but you're not necessarily handing it over at the time of the application. And um, that's probably where we would want to go because that's similar to work, how we handled the last round of funding. Right. Just wondering if that sounds reasonable to you in the approach. So we had to uh, we, uh, we get, uh, apply for the CARES Act, right, for our bank. There were certain things I had to enter out, right? So if I was going to build that, I some type of you know, checks or bills from a qualified contractor. There was you know, just things that you could do. You did an audit, and it was like it's like maybe a tax on it. Why those those details and those expenses? That just by back that with a corresponding thing. Should we make this upload? 
you're just saying an affidavit. He's saying it's similar to hearsay. I think one thing we, that we might did, be wrong we, did, we did verify quite a bit of data for in the commercial fishing industry. We looked at dealer slips and all of their dealer reports as available, which was it was harder for dealers to and processors to demonstrate. Yeah, so for me, I, I can't do the ANSI processors or the other that's also the thing that my business, I would say, if I built out. I built out 15 hundred square feet and I had to do that to make sure I could address the COVID situation, make sure that our social distancing is not going to provide uh, make work and the estimate to make work and then all the yeah, that's that I had to be out. So it's very relatively straightforward for me in terms of where my market segment is. Any other market segment, we put out different conversations that I can do. So Gina Fuller has come in, in the chat section and she asked a question. Um, are market pivot examples and retrofitting examples the only eligible activities, or are they just a small sample of the possible eligible activities? So up on the screen now and on the Zoom presentation online, um, the qualifying activities are listed here. So these are six qualifying activities that you know can be applied for. And again, just to reemphasize, we would like to hear from you all what are the most important because we have the ability to either um, shift or pivot more of the funding into one of these activities or another uh, perhaps you know just as a for example um, perhaps worker housing is not something that's necessarily applicable here in the state of Rhode Island maybe it is we want to uh, best tailor make this application to the um, types of activities that are most appropriate for our users here in Rhode Island. You have to remember this is a, um, a $50 million appropriation for the entire country where Alaska got you know the lion's share of it at 30 million given their landings. I'm sure that their needs are quite different in Alaska than they are here in Rhode Island. So we want to make sure that we hear from you all about what's most important. So to answer Gina's question directly, those are two examples of the six that are listed here on the screen, but the grant could be applied for in any of these six uh, bins or categories, but we would also, you know, just like to hear from you all again on what is most important. And Dan, I might add that in response to Gina's question, as I read this slide, and it is uh, directly lifted from the federal guidance, these are examples under each of the six categories. So you'll see words like such as or including but not limited to. So I take Gina's question to mean, is, can market pivots mean something other than what's listed here as example? And I think the answer is yes. We would like to get uh, Gina's insight though on what would be other examples that she might be looking to uh, have addressed so that we can ensure that our application addresses her needs and interests. Mm -hmm. Um, sure, we have a hand raised here from Kathy. Uh, Kathy, we're going to unmute you and please feel free to speak. Kathy, I think you have to unmute um, yourself on your Zoom. Yep, gotcha. Sorry. There you go. Thank you. Question on the workplace safety. I think that's where a lot of the money gets spent is the PPE, the sanitizing, that hand washing, the all the supplies needed. What kind of audit proof are you going to need of that? Um, and question on the vessels. It says, uh, is it actual fishing vessels included in this or only at sea processing vessels? So let's take those two questions separately. The first one, if I try to understand it, you were saying that workplace safety measures, you were wondering about what type of audits. Um, again, we envision this as uh, a potential affidavit being signed um, you know, for the grant application, such as very similar to the CARES Act. Uh, attesting that you know this expenditure was made during this qualifying period for these you know particular and specific uh, items you know for example as you stated under workplace safety measures um, we are encouraged to put in a audit component into this just to 
make sure that everyone is, uh, you know, let's just say putting in realistic applications. Uh, I would turn the question back around on you. Do you have any ideas what a reasonable, you know, audit might look like or, you know, what, what you could reasonably provide in the way of um, receipts or documentation? Kathy? Yeah, so, um, yeah, we have, like, all of our invoices are uh, electronic, so it's it's not a problem to provide it. It would just be a lot because we're constantly buying that stuff. So you're looking at a two-year period. There's going to be a lot of invoices for people because it's stuff you're buying all the time. It's not a one-time purchase for the two-year period. Sure. So That's, just a question. And I think that's where a lot of... Uh, a lot of the dealers would spend most of the money is is in this retrofitting their facilities and workplace safety. Okay, I appreciate that comment very much. Thank you. That gives us a, a lot of good insight. So, just out of curiosity, you had mentioned you you are continually purchasing supplies and things like that. As you know, I'm sure you are, and, and that's definitely a burden. Do you think that you could reasonably estimate? what you had spent within this qualifying uh, period? At this moment, no, but I could get that back to you, Dan. Sure, I, I mean, I don't need the exact answer, but I, I guess it's a conceptual question of, you know, if, if asked in the application process, you could reasonably come up with those numbers. So that's good. Um, your second question. Do you mind if I add something? Yeah, please. Um, just in the in the USDA, it does not go the affidavit route, we might not need the data to the application, but applicants need to keep it for at least three or two years on the for the purposes of the audit. So it just has to be clear on the Okay, that's great information. Thank you. Um, Kathy, could you repeat the second part of your question? It was had to do with processing vessels, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, I was wondering what that qualifies as. Is that any fishing vessel in the port or is that just at sea processing vessels? Sure. Uh, we have brought up that particular slide back onto the Zoom presentation. So an at processor vessel or an at sea processor means any vessel or platform that floats and can be moved from one place to another, uh, whether it be in state or federal waters and, you know, has, receives fish and operates as a processor. Um, that's defined as a processor just above, which means essentially, you know, a vessel that would cook, can, smoke, salt, dry, shut, fillet, freeze, or render into meal and oil. So th in my understanding, there are some vessels in the port that would qualify under this, uh, especially some of the uh, you know, squid freezer boats there. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm uh, reading a question from Gina Fuller. Um, I, I'm gonna just read it aloud. We have been developing a cooperative model and a microprocessing facility to serve as a place to facilitate direct sales and provide small scale processing facility to directly benefit fishermen. Market pivots is a key from our perspective. That's an excellent information, Gina. Thank you. Um, I see no other hands raised in the online gallery. Um, Bob, is there anything else that you wanted to bring up to further the discussion? No, it's, well, two things. One is I think before we break, you'll want to provide contact information for folks who want to follow up and provide additional comments or have additional questions. And the other is I, uh, I believe our intent would be to hold another workshop similar to this one uh, prior to the application deadline, at which time we would review uh, our draft application, uh, the components of that draft application, and seek final input so that there would be at least one other public uh, workshop opportunity scheduled between now and, and November 22nd for that purpose. I agree. Thank you very much, Bob. 
Um, so as Bob had just stated, and, and I had neglected to say this earlier, but yes, it is our intent to conduct another workshop subsequent to this before the 22nd of November to better determine, um, you know, final opinions based upon our application. Um, we're putting my email address up online in just a moment on the Zoom meeting and my contact information. Uh, I can be contacted directly on this program with any questions. And <clears throat> that'll be up in just a sec. There we are. Um, my office is located in Point Judith at 301 Great Island Road as well, directly across the street from the Black Island Ferry. I'm sure many of you are familiar with where it is. Uh, please feel free to stop by if you have any questions, you know, between now and when we schedule the next meeting. Uh, from here, you know, the DEM team will internally discuss some of the comments that you have all made this evening, which are much appreciated. And uh, then we'll come out with another presentation and hopefully the, the uh, semblance of a, a grant application that's going to help you all out. So seeing no other comments or questions online, Patrick, did you have anything to add before we close? Right. All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining. We really appreciate your help. Um, again, my contact is information is up on the uh, Zoom meeting right now. Please feel free to reach out with any questions. But uh, please stay tuned. Hear from us very soon on a meeting coming up most likely in the next two weeks. Thank you all again very much. Have a nice day.